Uh, good morning. I uh, welcome everyone this morning to Shekinah Online Pulpit. My name is Makungu Adeniba. Thank you for joining us. I will be taking today's announcements. But before I do that, I just want to say that the vision of our church is to build, empower, and renew souls by the Word of God. So our announcements as follows, uh, though they still remain the same, the only change is that we've moved to the online pulpit. Um, so our midweek service, we have a midweek service on Tuesday, which starts from 6.30 to 7.15 p.m. And then on Sunday, uh, as we have moved to online pulpit, we'll be having our Bible study from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, and then our church service will follow online at 10, 1030 to quarter to 12. Amen. Uh, we are still... Um, uh, we are still doing our mid, uh, our third our quarterly prayer and fasting. It started last week Wednesday, so we will continue fasting this week. On Wednesday, we'll be having our prayer online, our prayer and fasting prayers online, from six thirty to quarter to eight in the evening. Amen. Our other announcements as follows. Um, <coughs> Our church media department, we are having a project that is running, which is called Project 125. We ask for seeds to achieve this, to achieve this, pro, this project. And, if, and the scripture that we are using for this is based on 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you give. And for our church members, we are going to be taking our offering. So the offering details will be shared on the various WhatsApp groups. So if you would also like to give, if you're not part of the church WhatsApp groups, the details will be shared online. Amen. So I'd like to urge each and every one of us to give because the Bible says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. So I'm going to invite Pastor Abby to come and to share today's word. Amen. Thank you so much. Y'all welcome this morning. Uh, my name is Abby, as we introduced. Uh, as I was in our fellowship ministry. And um, <clears throat> I believe that the Lord has made it the way we are running this service this morning. It's all known to the Lord. And I just want to welcome everyone and thank you for being part of this message today. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for this celebration service. And just to also uh, make emphasis on the announcement to be made, on coming Wednesday, we're going to have uh, our prayer for the final segment of the seven days of prayer and fasting. So join us exactly after six on next week, Wednesday, and we shall have a prayer together. And the thing you remember is seeking the God of perfection. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the seventh month, and I believe that all things shall be perfected in your life. As we know, the number seven means perfection and having rest in the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So tonight, uh, this morning rather, um, let us, you know, share the word of prayer. I want us to rise in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify your name. Father, we honor you and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, have your way in our midst this morning. As always, we acknowledge the move of your spirit. We acknowledge the blessing of your spirit. Father, this morning we honor you. We pray, O oh Lord God, for every word that shall be uttered this morning, O oh Lord, that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will help us and help every hearer to have understanding, to gain the revelation of your word this morning in the name of Jesus. We pray, Jehovah, Lord God, that in this season that we all, as witness, we pray, Lord, let your mercy continue to reign among us. The Bible says to us in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, it says, In wrath, remember mercy. Father, Lord, in this time of COVID-19, we ask, O oh Lord God, that you remember us with your mercy. As we go out, as we come in, Father, Lord God, this pestilence shall not come near us or near your children in the name of Jesus. Thank you, marvelous Lord. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a clap of freedom. We welcome all those who are just joining us on this service this morning. 
and I thank you for the opportunity to receive this word this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Now, we have been teaching about the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and had no sorrow to it. I have shared what is blessing. That the blessing is the empowerment. The blessing is the enthronement and endowment of the Lord. The blessing is the ability of God that is given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. As it was in the days of Abraham that the Lord called him out of his comfort zone and decreed upon him that I will bless you and I will make your name great and thou shalt be a blessing. In other words, this blessing of the Lord is the ability of God that accompanies you as a believer. It's the blessing of the Lord is the spirit of God that revolves around you in everything that you do. He causes you to prosper. The Bible says in Genesis 39, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he makes all the work of his hand to prosper. And so the Egyptian, the master, saw that in all that he does, that the Lord was with Joseph, demonstrated in his work. So the blessing of the Lord is the Spirit of God, the empowerment, the realm of his Spirit, the realm of his grace upon a believer. And through the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 4, he said, For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. For cause is anyone hangs on a tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we might receive the promise of the, of, of the Spirit by faith. And so it is the covenant of blessing by which the Lord uh, uh, brought about the, the nation of Israel through the Abrahamic covenant. And this has been given to us. We have been made a partaker of the same covenant of blessing through the redemptive death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, I'm boldly saying this morning that you have been blessed with the blessing that makes rich and had no sorrow. And so it is that all that the blessing of the Lord causes you to have shall come with no sorrow. The business that God causes you to have, the possession that the Lord causes you to have, the possession that he gives you by his strength shall have no sorrow. And so it is your marriage. And so is your children in your life that God has given you. It shall come with no sorrow in the name of Jesus. And so we looked also at the various principles by which, you know, we gain, we, we, we remain under this blessing. Of course, through obedience through obedience we look at also Deuteronomy chapter 28 Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says now it shall be if you diligently obey the Lord your God being careful to do all his commandments which I command you today the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be in the country and in the city. Blessed shall you be. And so even in verse 18, verse 8 rather, it says a word. It says, the Lord will command the blessing upon you in your bands and in all that you put your hand to and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. So, blessing of the Lord accompanies you to have a satisfactory progress. The blessing of the Lord it's, it's, it's the grace of God that is given to you in all your endeavors. And so, this morning, 
I want to continue on the aspect that says sustaining the blessing. Sustaining the blessing. I began this last week that how do we sustain the blessing? After our obedience, after seeking the kingdom of God and all the, its righteousness, how do we sustain this blessing? Again, we will have to look at the aspect that teaches us to be humble. Therefore, humility sustains the blessing. The blessing of the Lord which makes you can have no sorrow to eat requires your humility. In other words, when the blessing of the Lord manifests in your life, by the essence of your position, good career job, good business, good marriage, the Lord wants you to sustain it because it's the spirit of the Lord. Because your, you, your, your pride over the things that you receive by the blessing, that is what we call the blessings, can become a source of pride. And God wants you to remain humble with what he has blessed you with. God wants you to remain humble with the position that he has blessed you with. And so, humility is required for you to sustain the blessing. Hallelujah. The reward in verse, Proverbs 22 verse 4. Proverbs 22 verse 4. It says, the reward of humility, the reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Proverbs 22 verse 4. It said, the reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. So we need to receive this this morning and understand that it's so important that we believe God that we shall remain humble with the blessings of the Lord upon our life. Now, let's look at, for example, the story in the Bible that we all know very well, the prodigal son. I want to point out some instance of this parable, Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, Jesus spoke about this parable to indicate to us some elements of what possession can do to us. And in, in, in that parable, verse 11, it said, and he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them and not many days later, the young son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now, why am I bringing this up? The prodigal son asked the father for his own portion of inheritance before time. He asked for the portion of his inheritance before time. Before the season that the father has set for his beneficiaries, he took the money and other things. And we did not even know the content, but definitely every inheritance, what he could have squandered, involves or includes material and even money. And so he went to this far country. He did not mention, I mean, he did not really reference. He did no reference. He went out of pride, out of the fact that now I've got in my own inheritance. So he went on to this far country and begin, begins to, he begins to, lo to live a loose life. This is what the blessing, the blessings might cost you if you are not conscious that this is the gift of God, that this is the grace of God. And so pride set in. And so he went. And when he went, the Bible says to us that this guy went to spend money and with all kinds of people, loose living, prostitute, and all kinds of things. That he 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 went to this place, he blew it up. 
and at the end of the day, he, beca he became a beggar. He was reduced to penury. He was not humble with all that he took from the Father. He was not humble with it. He did not look back. So sometimes pride over the things that we have gained can make us to turn our back to God. The blessing that makes rich is the empowerment of God that causes all things to work for our good, that makes all things to happen for us in our career life, in our business, even in our ministries. And we begin to see the elements and the paraphernalia of this blessing, maybe in form of houses or in form of material things like vehicles, in form of, you know, even position at work. And all this needs to be handled with humility so that we can sustain the source that has given it to us. This is what I want to achieve. That we need to be conscious, to be humble with what God has given us or where God has placed us as his children. Amen. So we saw here that this boy, he did not ask for wisdom. You know, sometimes humility helps you to gain more insight, to gain more wisdom. But the prodigal son went away he went away without asking even for wisdom. He did not. And so he could not manage it. And so sometimes when we are in the blessing of the Lord, and these blessings are flowing in our life, if we are humble, we are able to receive wisdom to sustain the things that God has given us. We will not squander it. Hallelujah. So we saw here a form of ego in this prodigal son. There was ego. And at the end of the day, he squandered it all. But as God will have it, the Bible says to us in Luke chapter 15, verse 17, And when he repented, he came to his senses, and he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread? But I am dying here with hunger. God has begun to help him here. He came to his senses. He became humble. He became humble. He became sensitive, sensible to go back to the Father. And when he went back to the Father, the Bible recorded in this parable that Jesus gave that this boy, prodigal son, became more celebrated even than the brother that was in the house. What is this telling us? When we humble ourselves with the blessing of the Lord upon us, we will always find the source of God. We will always sustain it. And I want to say to somebody who has been kept, who has been taken away or distracted by, by the promotion, by the, the things of this life, God is waiting for you. God has not forgotten about you. But you need to become humble. You need to humble yourself to serve Him, to serve God, to, to, to increase your relationship with Christ Jesus. You will always remain attached to the source of the blessing. Jesus says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Ye are the branches. For the branch cannot exist alone unless it's attached to Him. And He says, you can do nothing except you are in Him. And he abide, and you are in him, and he abides in you. And so we need to understand this: that we need to humble ourselves before the Lord with all that He has given us. The Bible says, according to the word of Peter, First Peter chapter five verse six, Peter spoke to the people. He said, "Therefore, humble yourself. Therefore, humble yourself." He's talking about humility. He said, "Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God." That it may exalt you at the proper time. That it may exalt you at the proper time. We've seen that, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, people, some believers, they see a fickle, a fickle of what God wants to do in their life. The small thing that they have seen becomes a point of pride for them. And so they become uncontrollable. And when they become uncontrollable, God will not trust them with other things that He want to commit into them. And that's why Peter says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, under the spiritual authorities. 
humble yourself so that you will be exalted at the proper time. You will see beyond what you are seeing right now. That's what you mean. You will see beyond what you are seeing right now. If you are humble to remain under spiritual guidance, under the authority, under God, those that God has placed over you, in other words, you will fulfill the potential that you have seen in your life. You will go beyond where you are. That's what Peter is saying here. So, and I pray that you will not miss your time of promotion. You will not miss the honor that God has reserved for you in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> the word of Jesus says in Luke chapter 14, verse 11, Jesus says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. Many things, many things are responsible for people's pride and gross exaltation of themselves. But Jesus says here, every, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. It's the word of Christ. And so we need to receive this today for us to sustain where God has put us. For us to sustain that which he has blessed us with. It includes humility. It includes humility. Just as obedience to the word of God. Just as obedience to the word of God. And so today we need to understand this as God wants us to hear. Also, Paul made similar uh, um, allusion to this. He alluded to this fact of the word of Jesus in Luke 14, 11. And it says, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, Apostle Paul says, For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. A measure of faith. But he says there, do not think more than you ought to think of yourself. That you might think, think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. This is it's telling us. It's telling us to be humble. It's telling us not to carry ourselves than we ought to carry ourselves. It's teaching us not to prove. Even to, to some testimonies must be testified to the glory of God. Not about how we can perform. And so, it's so important for us to understand and receive this message in the name of Jesus. Humility sustains the blessing. Sometimes, we also see people want to prove that they are humble and they are quiet. You say, by being quiet is, is, is to be humble. No, being quiet does not mean you are humble. Being quiet is not humility. Quietness is another form of pride in certain individuals. Being quiet can mean different things to individuals. To some, it's unforgiveness, determination not to forgive. And so they keep mum and they keep away. Some being quiet is holding grudge on issues holding grudge on issues or reports. So, we, we must understand that you may be quiet, you may want to do your own thing, you may want to be on your own path. I can tell you, it's tantamount to pride. It's tantamount to pride. You know, the Bible says also to us that pride goes before fall. So, being quiet is not that you are humble. Being quiet may mean that you are full of yourself, being quiet may mean among the brethren may mean that you know these people are below me. I cannot talk to them. I just want to walk away. I cannot have anything to do with them. No, that's the spirit of pride. Because you rely on what makes you different 
to other brethren. And that amounts to pride. But it's for a short time. But if you humble yourself in true sense, God will exhort you at the proper time. You will sustain the blessing that is upon your life. And we must all understand this. You know, being quiet is an element of saying, I don't, I don't care. When you're quiet about something, it shows that you don't care. It, that's what it might mean. And being quiet over matters that you are supposed to repent about, it also means that you are unrepentant when you are being quiet, when you walk away from either your mistakes and all this thing is being, you know, backed up by what people feel that they have attained, that they have, and therefore they become unanswerable to anyone, nor care about other people. These are elements of pride. And the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and had no sorrow with it, it comes with humility. So I'm saying this morning, for you to sustain this blessing, you need to be a humble person. You need to be a humble person. You know, in some cases also that I've seen, in, in you know, some cases, you know, of being quiet to some people is the fear of vulnerability that is within them. Fear of vulnerability. Some status conscious or conscious of the position that they occupy. And this means that, you know, when you cannot let down your guard to be emotionally identified with other brethren who are having maybe some kind of life experiences and then you keep quiet when God has blessed you with the position to speak, to give counsel, to assist, it might amount to a pride. It shows that there is no humility within you if you do not want to smell like the sheep you don't want, want to be identified with other people or you just want to quietly do your own things and, and be quiet about all stuff it amounts to pride but when you believe that it's not by your power nor by your mind it's by the spirit of god you will always be humbled about the grace that you have you, you have been given the blessing of the lord upon your life and you shall surely, you know, you, you will sustain it. The Lord will exhort you at the proper time. Praise God. Humility is conscious driven, sensitive to the to the to love others. The Bible says, But God gives grace to the humble. You resist the proud. You resist the proud. Hallelujah. As I'm about to go into the second segment, how do we sustain the blessing? Again, we can sustain the blessing when we are in the right company. When we keep the right company, you can sustain the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Because through Christ, we have become a partaker of the Abrahamic covenant of blessing. We have been enthroned to prosper in the things of life and godliness. That's what Paul, I mean Peter also says in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. He, he pointed it to the believers and he says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And he says, seeing that is divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence so in other words he's showing us about the blessing that we have been connected with about the covenant that multiplies the grace of God upon our life, that gives us the peace in our work, the peace in our marriage, the peace in our, in our businesses, by the knowledge of God. So the entrance to the blessing through Christ is the company that you keep. 
you cannot sustain it when you are in the wrong company because when you are in the wrong company what people say into your subconscious kills the knowledge of God that is in you in other words you don't grow in those knowledge therefore you cannot sustain the blessing of the word and now look at Psalm, the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 1 the book of Psalm chapter 1 gave us an indication hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the Lord amen I'm teaching about sustaining the blessing sustaining the blessing Psalm 1 chapter 1 the book of Psalm chapter 1 it says how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. In other words, the word of the Lord becomes his source of refreshing and increasing in the knowledge because it's in, it's in the right company verse 3 says he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and in whatever he does he prospers and this shows us here that being in the right company sustains the blessing of the Lord in your life. The blessing of the Lord that makes rich and had no sorrow to it. For you to sustain it, you need to be in the right company of people who encourages you in the things of God, not those who discourage you from the things of God. You need to be in the right company of the people who speak the truth unto you, not those who deceive you, not those who want to take you away from the source of your blessing. There are so many things there out there that the believers, you know, join themselves to, which corrupts their understanding, which corrupts the knowledge of God that they have received. And so we need to know this morning that God wants us to remain in the right company so that his blessing may be sustained upon our life. Sustaining the blessing of the Lord. Therefore, those who you associate with, those who you associate with, determines how you sustain the blessing upon your life. Depends on how you sustain the, 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 the blessing upon your business. You know, I've seen so many people who do not understand and they are Christian, they are children of God, the grace that is upon them. In a time of pandemic like this, in a time of uncertainty, they go into other means in order to sustain themselves in the present challenges. But they are not coming from God. They are not coming from God. And so we, we need to understand this, that the Lord wants us to be in the right company so that we can continually be refreshed, so that the leaf of our life can continually be green, the, green the, the leaf of our spirit can continually be green, that we continually to increase in spirit and in truth. So it's so important for us to understand that we need to remain with the right company. You know, also you remember that the Bible says that, you know, bad company corrupts good morals. And so, I want to encourage you in a time like this that we, everybody talks about you know, adversity, uncertainty. I want you to remain fervent. I want you to remain trusting God. I want you to remain you know, you know, focused 
on the word of God, on the knowledge of God who has taken you up to this level and he will surely take you and promote you at the proper time. You know, the book of Jeremiah also also uh, 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 pointed to, to this fact. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. I'll take it from verse 5. It says, you know, thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind. Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind. You know, when those people who trust in mankind, that means they are in association with the flesh. And curse is the opposite of blessing. Let's finish it. It says, and this, he said, curse is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength. Every, whatever goes outside of the world, whatever idea goes outside of the world, it becomes the things of the flesh. You cannot be under that supernatural realm of the blessing. And I want to encourage us that in this atmosphere that we remain under the supernatural atmosphere of the Spirit of God the, by His covenant of blessing. He said that makes his flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Verse 6 says, for he will be like a bush in the desert and will not cease and will not see when prosperity comes. So I want to tell you that prosperity will still come after the pandemic. Prosperity will still come. And here it is. But we live in stony waste in the wilderness, a land of soul without inhabitant. These are those who trust in mankind. These are those who associate themselves with mankind and all the teachings of the new age. It's also, you know, being in the wrong company, taking a wrong counsel. You know, because there are a lot of things on the, on, on, on the internet these days, but not all of them are coming from the true God. So when we're talking about sustaining the blessing, by being in the right company, it also includes the messages, the information that you receive from wrong sources. It's a company with them in the wrong sources because, you know, information is different to revelation. And I'm talking about the revelation of the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and had no sorrow to it. This is what God wants you to believe this morning in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 17 verse 7 now says concerning you who are in the right company. He said, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust and whose trust is the Lord for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes. He said, you will not fear when the heat comes. You will not fear when this pandemic comes. You will not fear concerning all these uncertainties and all the analysis of economic recession. You will not fear. Why? Because you have blessed, because you trust in the Lord. You will sustain the blessing of the Lord upon your life because you trust God. And so whatever comes, you are not going to be afraid. Whatever comes, you are not going to be, you know, worried about so about tomorrow because you trust in the Lord. Amen. And he says, but its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought, nor cease to yield food. He said, those who trust in the Lord, those who keep the company of the word of God, those who are assembled around the word of God like we all do this morning, all over the world, we are keeping the company with the word of the Spirit. And so, the word of God is saying to you through Jeremiah, prophetically this morning, he said, blessed are you who trust in the Lord, and whose trust 
is the Lord. For you will be like a tree planted by the water. And that water, you understand, the water represents the spirit. The water represents the word. And this morning, you are planted by the word that I'm preaching to you. And I want to assure you that this year shall be good for you. In the name of Jesus. He said, For you will be like a tree, like a tree planted by the water, that extend its roots by a stream, and will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will be green. He said, it, Green represents a good pasture. When you are in the right company, you sustain the blessing, and you will, your, your leaves will be green. That means you will find pasture. That means you will see fruitfulness in your life. Not by your well, how, how hard you can work, but how the blessing rests upon you. Hallelujah. He says, it will not be anxious in a year of drought. Are we not in the year of pandemic? It's over a year and a half right now. But the word of God says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord. He said, for they shall not be anxious in a year of drought, in a time of pandemic, in a time of uncertainty. They shall not be anxious. They shall pray unto the Lord. They shall give thanks unto the Lord. They shall make supplication unto the Lord. And this is what God wants us to believe. Because the blessing of the Lord makes rich and had no sorrow. You need to sustain it. You need to sustain it by your obedience by your humility and by keeping the right company listening to the right word for the moment you know you can be online maybe after watching me now you're going to switch on to another person who is preaching but i want you to know that whatever preaching you are hearing that does not bless you that does not intensify the blessing of the lord for the moment you may be anxious on how you will survive this pandemic but as you receive this word this money, I'm assuring you that, you know, prosperity shall be your portion. Healing shall be your portion. Favor shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. And so as I'm about to round up here, it says your leaves will be green and you will not be anxious in the year, in the year of drought, nor would you cease to yield fruit. <laughs> Praise God. He said, nor will you cease to yield fruit. In other words, you know, you shall be fruitful. No matter what the pandemic is saying, you, you will see prosperity. You will see the hand of God in your business. You will see the hand of God in your career. No matter what it is, because you are in the company of His Word. You have the knowledge. You trust in God. Because what the Word of God does, when you are in the company of the Word of God, when you are listening to the right word of God, it increases your faith. It increases your intense intensity of your trust in the Lord. And surely he will not fail you. Jesus said, he is the vine. And you are the branches. And you surely bear fruit. Because he is the vine. Praise the name of the Lord. And as so this morning we just thank the Lord for the word that he has given us. Hallelujah. And as about to close this morning, Sustaining the blessing, we need to keep the right company so that we can make the right decision in such a time like this, so that we can believe the word of God. We need the right company. We need the right company. Hallelujah. So that we can we can take, you know, we can make choices that we that we glorify God. We can make decisions that will sustain our business, sustain our family, our marriages. We can make decisions. But when you are on the wrong company, you cannot be blessed under this covenant. When you are in the wrong company. Because, you know, a bad company corrupts good morals. You know, finally, if you look at the story of Rehoboam, Rehoboam he had the companies of his friends instead of his fathers who had the experience of the kingdom. His father, King Solomon, was the most wise king on earth during his time. But Rehoboam took the wrong advice of his friends and it caused the division of the kingdom of Israel. 
It caused the division of the kingdom of Israel. And that's why, you know, sometimes if you are not, most often if you are not in the right company or in the, in the true spirit, in spirit and in truth, you cannot make the right decision. Especially in this time of uncertainty. I've seen people make decisions that divide their family. I've made people make decisions that divide their marriage. I've made people who make wrong decisions and go after other things and it, you know, it crushes their business. It crushes their ministry. But God is saying this morning, when you keep the right company, his blessing that makes rich, which had no sorrow, shall surely be upon you. And his grace will manifest upon your life. And so we saw in the story of Rehoboam, he said, the young man who grew up with him spoke to him saying, thus you shall say to these people who spoke to you saying, your father made our yoke heavy, now you make it lighter for us. And they advised him, they said, but you shall speak to them. My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. Whereas my father loaded you with a heavy yoke, I will had to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. What am I trying to point out here? Is wrong company, wrong advice, wrong influence. That was what happened to Rehoboam. He could not sustain that kingdom. He could not sustain the wisdom by which the father Solomon built that kingdom. And this is the moment that we need to believe God to direct our footsteps, to order our steps. Because you are looking for help, pray that God order, orders your step. If you are looking for help, He will order your step to the right company, not bad company. Wherever the challenge is, we need to understand that wrong companies corrupt good morals. Wrong company can take away the revelation you have been living by. The wrong companies can deplete the knowledge of God that you have received over the years. And I'm saying, this might be the way for you to return to the feet of Christ and become come into the right company. Hear the right word, the word of life, and sure, life will return to your finances. Life will return to your business. Life will return to your ministry. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name. This has been the grace of God. I'm Abbe Adeniga. I've been sharing concerning how we sustain the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and had no sorrow. We've spoken about obedience according to Malachi chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, 11, 12. The heaven of the Lord will open and it shall surely pour down blessing until we do not have enough room. And we take away devourers. When devourers leaves are removed, is the working of the blessing. And so we have also spoken about humility concerning the things of God, the things of life and godliness, that we remain humble with the blessings of God, which are the paraphernalia of the blessing, the empowerment of God. And also I have also spoken that we need to keep the right company so that we can sustain the knowledge of God that we have received, so that we can sustain the covenant of blessing of Abraham by which we live. We need to keep the right company. And so it is about this, the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. And I pray that this message will remain with you. And as you play it and, and you know, uh, you reflect on this message, I know that the Lord will surely, you know, reminds you of all that we have spoken in this time in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for sharing this fellowship time with me. I want to thank you for being online with me this morning and I pray that the word we have shared together this morning will continually dwell in our hearts so that we can, you know, you know, uh, uh, be blessed. We can walk under the blessing and under the grace, under the mighty hand of God in such a time like this. May God bless you and I will see you again on our midweek services on Tuesday and also our special service on Wednesday in the name of Jesus. God bless you. This is Abe Adeniba.
as pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry in South Africa, Johannesburg, South Africa. God bless you. Amen. Let us pray as we are about to close. Our Father, we bless your name. We give you all the praise this morning. I thank you, Lord God, for the word that I have spoken. And I thank you for the hearts that have received it. And I thank you, Lord, for granting your Holy Spirit to be present with them that are listening to me. I thank you for the Holy Spirit guiding us to the truth of the word of today. Father, Lord, we are so privileged to receive your word this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings upon our life. Thank you for the wisdom to sustain the blessing. Thank you, Almighty God, for directing our footsteps that we will not step into wrong company, but we shall remain under this covenant, the revelation of this covenant, of the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and has no sorrow. Thank you, mighty God, for the testimonies that I shall follow this message, that many will be seeing your hand in their businesses, your hand in their career restoration. Those who have lost job, I pray, mighty God, that you will restore their job. Those whose business has been closed, Father, Lord, you will bring about the blessing, O Lord God, that will bring them back into full business, restoring their businesses, restoring even their ministry. We pray for churches that could not open this morning. I pray, mighty God, that this blessing will rest upon those ministries and their churches, their doors of their churches shall be shall reopen in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We give you all the praise for all the families of the earth that has been blessed through your seed, Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for watching. For all the members of Shekinah, please we will share our uh, offering and tight um, information. And for those who are watching me all over the world, I've got the details there on the screen. May God bless you and so into this world and you shall surely be blessed. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.